Marvellous medicine number two. They were in the kitchen now and the big saucepan was on the stove. All the things Mr Cranky had bought were lined up near the sink. Come along, my boy, cried Mr Killy Cranky. Which one did you put in first? Mm, this one, George said. Golden gloss hair shampoo. He emptied the bottle into the pan. Now the toothpaste. George went on. And the shaving soap... And the face cream. And the nail varnish. Keep at it, my boy, cried Mr Cranky, dancing around the kitchen. Keep putting them in. Don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. It's a pleasure, my dear fellow, to watch you work. One by one, George poured and squeezed the things into the saucepan. With everything so close at hand, the whole job didn't take him more than ten minutes. But when it was all done... The saucepan didn't somehow seem to be quite as full as it had been the first time. Now what did you do? cried Mr Cranky. Did you stir it? I boiled it, George said, but not for long, and I stirred it as well. So Mr Cranky lit the gas under the saucepan, and George stirred the mixture with the same long wooden spoon as he used before. It's not brown enough, George said. <gasps> Wait a minute! I know what I've forgotten. What? cried Mr Cranky. Tell me quick, because if we've forgotten even one tiny thing, then it won't work. At least not in the same way. A quart of brown gloss paint, George said. That's what I've forgotten. Mr Kitty Cranky shot out of the house and into his car like a rocket. He sped down the village and brought the paint and rushed back again. He opened the can in the kitchen and handed it to George. George poured the paint into the saucepan. Aha! That's better, George said. That's more like the right colour. It's boiling, cried Mr Cranky. It's boiling and bubbling, George. Is it ready yet? It's ready, George said. At least I hope it is. Right, shouted Mr Cranky, hopping about. Let's test it. Let's give some to a chicken. My heavens alive, why don't you calm down a bit? Mrs Cranky said, coming into the kitchen. Calm down, cried Mr Cranky. You expect me to calm down? And here we are, mixing up the greatest medicine ever discovered in the history of the world. Come along, George. Dip a cup full out of the saucepan and get a spoon and we'll give some to a chicken just to make absolutely certain we've got the right mixture. Outside, in the yard, there were several chickens that hadn't had any of George's marvellous medicine number one. They were pecking about in the dirt in the silly way that chickens do. George crouched down, holding out a spoonful of the marvellous medicine number two. Come on, chicken, he said. Good chicken. Chick, chick, chick. A white chicken with black specks on its feathers looked up at George. It walked over to the spoon and went, peck. The effect that medicine number two had on this chicken was not quite the same as the effect produced by medicine number one, but it was very interesting. Whoosh! shrieked the chicken, and it shot six feet up into the air and came down again. Then sparks came flying out of its beak, bright yellow sparks of fire, as though someone was sharpening a knife on a grindstone inside its tummy. Then its legs began to grow longer. Its body stayed the same size, but the two thin yellow legs got longer and longer and longer and longer still. What's happened to it? cried Mr Killy Cranky. Something's wrong, George said. The legs went on growing and the more they grew, the higher up into the air went the chicken's body. When the legs were about 15 feet long, they stopped growing. The chicken looked perfectly absurd with its long, long legs and its ordinary little body perched high up on top. It was like a chicken on stilts. Oh, my sainted aunts, cried Mr Killy Cranky. We've got it wrong. This chicken's no good to anyone. It's all legs. No one wants chicken's legs. Oh, I must have left something out, George said. I know you left something out, cried Mr Cranky. Think, boy, think. What was it you left out? I've got it, said George. 
What is it? Quick! Flea powder for dogs, George said. You mean you put flea powder in the first one? Yes, Dad, I did. A whole carton of it. Then that's the answer. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, said George. Did we have brown shoe polish on our list? Oh, uh, we did not, said Mr Cranky. I used that too, said George. Well, no wonder it went wrong, said Mr Cranky. He was already running to his car and soon he was heading down to the village to buy more flea powder and more shoe polish. Marvellous Medicine Number 3 Here it is! cried Mr Kitty Cranky, rushing into the kitchen. One carton of flea powder for dogs and one tin of brown shoe polish. George poured the flea powder into the giant saucepan, then he scooped the shoe polish out of its tin and added that as well. Stir it up, George, shouted Mr Cranky. Give it another boil. We've got it this time. I bet we've got it. After marvellous medicine number three had been boiled and stirred, George took a cupful of it into the yard to try it out on another chicken. Mr Cranky ran after him, flapping his arms and hopping with excitement. Come and watch this one, he cried out to Mrs Cranky. Come and watch us turning an ordinary chicken into a lovely, great, big one that lays eggs as large as footballs. I hope you do better than last time said Mrs Cranky, following them out. Come on, chicken, said George, holding out a spoonful of medicine number three. Good, chicken. Chick, 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 chick. Have some of this lovely medicine. A magnificent black cockerel with a scarlet comb came stepping over. The cockerel looked at the spoon and went, peck. cock a doo 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 squawked the cockerel shooting up into the air and coming down again. Ooh, watch him now, cried Mr Cranky. Watch him grow. Any moment he's going to start getting bigger and bigger. Mr Kitty Cranky, Mrs Cranky and little George stood in the yard staring at the black cockerel. The cockerel stood quite still. It looked as though it had a headache. What's, what's happening to its neck? Mrs Cranky said. It, it, it's getting longer, George said. I'll say, it's getting longer, Mrs Cranky said. Mr Cranky, for once, said nothing. Last time it was legs, Mrs Cranky said. Now it's the neck. Who wants a chicken with a long neck? You can't eat a chicken's neck. It was an extraordinary sight. The cockerel's body hasn't grown at all, but the neck was now about six feet long. All right, George, Mr Cranky said. What else have you forgotten? I, I, I don't know, George said. Oh, yes, you do, Mr Cranky said. Come along, boy. Think. There's probably just one vital thing missing and you've got to remember it. Um, I put in some engine oil from the garage, George said. Did you have that on your list? Eureka! cried Mr Cranky. That's the answer. How much did you put in? Half a pint, George said. Mr Cranky ran to the garage and found another half pint of oil. And some antifreeze, George called after him. I sloshed in a bit of antifreeze. Marvellous medicine number four. Back in the kitchen once again, George, with Mr Cranky watching him anxiously, tipped half a pint of engine oil and some antifreeze into a giant saucepan. Boil it up again, cried Mr Cranky. Boil it and stir it. George boiled it and stirred it. You'll never get it right, said Mrs Cranky. Don't forget, you don't just have to have the same things, but you've got to have exactly the same amounts of those things. And how can you possibly do that? Oi, keep out of this, cried Mr Cranky. We're doing fine. We've got it this time. You see if we haven't. This was George's Marvellous Medicine number four. And when it had boiled for a couple of minutes, George once again carried a cupful of it out into the yard. Mr Cranky ran after him. Mrs Cranky followed more slowly. You're going to have some mighty queer chickens around here if you keep going on like this, she said. Dish it out, George, cried Mr Cranky. Give a spoonful to that one over there, 
he pointed to a brown hen. George knelt down and held out the spoon with the new medicine in it. Chick chick, he said, try some of this. The brown hen walked over and looked at the spoon. It went, peck, away, it said. Then a funny whistling noise came out of its beak. Watch it grow, shouted Mr Cranky. Don't be too sure, said Mrs Cranky. Why is it whistling like that? Keep quiet, woman, cried Mr Cranky. Give it a chance. They stood there staring at the brown hen. It, it, it's getting smaller, George said. Look at it. Dad, it, it's shrinking. And indeed it was. In less than a minute, the hen had shrunk so much it was no bigger than a new hatched chick. It looked ridiculous. Right guys, another video complete. Join me next time for my final video of George's Marvellous Medicine by Roald Dahl. And remember, keep watching the YouTube page as there are other videos in the pipeline you won't want to miss. Be safe, keep in touch.